consider supporting Arkea Soup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Hello and welcome back to another Digging the Game. Today I'm joined by the always awesome and incidentally incredibly patient Liv. Hello Liv. Hi guys. <laughs> and uh, well over the past few weeks Liv has been playing a little computer game called Far Cry 5. Now now, can you explain sort of in a sentence or two does this game live up to the anthropological potential that we thought it might have? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm laughing, incidentally, people at home, because uh, this is now, what, the fifth time we tried yeah. to start this video? And uh, we keep on getting sidelined before we can get into it. So I'm going to stop us being sidelined right here and uh, and dive in. So where, where are we going to start? What are we going to look at in Far Cry 5? Uh... We're going to start with uh, looking at a map and how they have divided... Uh the valid that you play the game in uh, okay. between themselves. And when I say them, I to I'm talking about the evil cult that we're undoing. Oh, okay. Now, when you say evil, um, is this is this objectively evil? Or is this sort of, again, if we're thinking anthropologically, do, do they, are we, are we putting I, I, values I'm sure that people? they don't view themselves as evil. I mean, they are viewing themselves as the saviors of humanity and that everyone else is evil, uh -huh. um, which, most people that are defined as evil don't view themselves as evil. So. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, <laughs> That's a good point. Um, okay, so with our evil de uh, evil doers, um, how have they divided up the map? Uh, they, well, I'm going to start to explain that they, they are a family unit. Okay. Uh, there is uh, one brother on top who mm -hmm. is like the prophet. Uh, and then his sibling has divided up the valley into three parts. Okay. Uh, and they have divided it up uh, along the uh, rivers in the valley. So each of them have the borders made out by a big river or some islands. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the whole game takes place within sort of one bounded sort of valley that's yeah that's subdividable in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It takes place in a national park in Montana. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so uh, I suppose, in the, it's, and is this sort of, did this gain your attention because it is, as it were, it's a sound way of dividing the land. This yeah. is how people divide land. Yeah. yeah. It's a very traditional way of dividing land. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, cool. Now, um, what, is it, so uh, beyond sort of, I suppose, their approach to landscape, um, what, mm -hmm. is there anything else that sort of that got your attention in terms of uh, the approach to, to the geography in this game? Uh, well, you can really play to it, mm -hmm. uh, since you're doing a, a, a guerrilla warfare game, mm -hmm. uh, because that's how we take them down. Uh, you're always outnumbered, and uh, you need to use the environment to make yourself successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of what would be defined as domestic terrorism going on. Uh, 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 on whose part? Like, uh, all parts. Uh, all, uh, parts. Uh, all parties, <laughs> okay, right, I see, I see. <laughs> Um, so in that, and, sense, in that sense, in this game, you are arguably a domestic terrorist, then? Yes, yes right. you are. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I split, spend a lot of time sniping people from, like, <laughs> hunting towers and blowing up silos. <laughs> no, no, obviously we're talking about the game, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a bank, I know it's a bank holiday shit. in Sweden, but, you know. Yeah. You, should, no, you shouldn't no. confess to these things on, on videos. <laughs> no, no, I, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, of course, cool. it's all pretend. Um, uh, yeah, naturally, naturally. Okay, so we're going to look at some, some of your terrorist acts, are we? <laughs> yes. Uh, I've just picked up a sniper, sniper rifle, which is how I play this game. I know a lot of people might not, but uh -huh. I, I'm not really good at close-range combat, so sniper rifles are always my preferred option. You're one of those, uh, you're one of those campers, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. <laughs> yeah. No, no joke, even. Okay. Uh, but 
to understand what's happening, you should probably know that I'm playing a deputy uh, that was sent with my colleagues to this area to make sure or to arrest the leader of the cult uh, because he had done some illegal stuff. And so are you uh, police? Are you FBI? Or? Uh, police. Okay. Local police. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And we had uh, uh, a federal officer with us. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, things went sideways and Spoilers. now I'm... <laughs> yeah, now I'm <laughs> I'm oh, the only survivor. I see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> or the only free survivor, anyway. Wow. Uh, so, the game is finding people to align yourself with, mm -hmm. uh, build alliances, and retake this valley. Because due to what you did early in the game, the cult might be thinking that this is the apocalypse and that everything is needs to get going. And so is, is this, are you referring to the fact, because obviously in the first video we did, you basically take their profit, um, yeah. or try to yeah. take their profit captive. So they think you, you, that you're you're a harbinger of the end days then? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and that you're taking them down one after one uh, doesn't help your reputation. Okay. Uh, but I was thinking that we might look at one of the quests that you can do. Uh, mm -hmm. They're using this uh, fertilizer factory. Uh, to make explosives uh, and they're also uh, using they're basically poisoning the water uh, from this valley okay. uh, with drugs uh, <clears throat> to make the population easier to, to subdue. convert yeah subdue and convert okay. uh, so um just uh, let's just pause it just for a second then um, I mean at the moment um, uh, we can hear some sort of, some sort of uh, radio station mm -hmm. or something playing in the background and I think well you wanted us to listen to that a little bit yes in a, because in a moment. it's really creepy and it's it really captures the the, the creep factor on these <laughs> people <laughs> but I suppose beyond uh, it's one of the things that I'm interested in um, then uh, is because when this game was announced when it was being produced there, there was an awful mm -hmm. lot of potential in terms of it, of it commenting on uh, real world tensions, especially political tensions. Um, do, do, but this idea of sort of, I suppose, drugging the valley, does that so, somehow undermine the the real world impact of of this sort of subsection of, of, of this little community taking over in so much as it's not so much about, again, as, as we would describe it archaeologically, anthropologically, power plays, it's much more about sort of uh, people being you know, compromised already, and therefore actually the computer game sort of doesn't have to comment on the politics or the anthropology or the, the social aspects. I don't think aspects. so. I mean, there's a lot of political comments in the game, and you're you're put in a position where what would, in pop culture, maybe not be portrayed as the heroes mm -hmm. in American mm -hmm. society, mm -hmm. uh, are the ones that are the only ones that are able to put up a fight against these people, uh, because they're they're very good at using the system mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and just kind of take what they want uh, either by force or just by sheer numbers because they have so many followers mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. when you come into the game so I think it's a really interesting setting um, and you really get to I mean of course it's it's stereotypes a lot of it because it's a it's a video game not a really nuanced political satire mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it is I don't know uh, but yeah I, I think I think the dragging of the water is also a bit of a comment mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because well <clears throat> using drugs to subvert people is a real tactic mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and to put it in the water supply in a controlled area is a legitimate tactic hmm. well I suppose it, it also because again as a as you said at the beginning of the video you know, we're both non-americans so in the sense we're sort of looking in on on a hyper real commentary on what's happening in another culture uh, yeah uh, it's interesting how there are there are lots of people you uh, in 
parts of America, for example, those people you know, people who watch maybe Alex Jones and this kind of thing on, on YouTube, who who are convinced that they are in fact being compromised and being drugged mm -hmm. uh, through you know they talk about vapor trails in the sky and 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 I've, I've, I don't think I've heard them talk about water supplies, but actually I suppose things like fluoride in the water, people often yeah. quite quite uh, suspect of that sort of stuff. Okay, so. Okay, I, I just wanted just to sort of touch on that. Cause I just found that to be an interesting element. But um, okay, cool. So, so uh, what sort of stuff can we expect to hear then on the radio? Uh, we're going to hear someone being quote unquote converted okay. uh, by the leader of this sector that we're in, and his name is John. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also going to hear him talking about the resistance and their plans. Uh, okay. Right, so I'll just I'll just turn down the volume a little bit, and um, yeah. it sounds like what we're hearing is essentially worship music, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think one of the guards there was singing along. Um, yeah. But what what's it, what what sort of, what get, what ends up happening then? Because that sound that doesn't sound too scary. No, uh, it it gets worse. Uh, but we're going to hear a woman coming through on the radio. Yeah, I think uh, we just about can. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? She's sort of screaming. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just turn it up again. So what's happening to her then? She seems to be begging. Yeah, uh, the, the core of John's, uh, well, religious... Uh, I ministry. don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. is uh, the thought of confession. Okay. And that you confess all your sins to him, and that uh, through the power of Jess uh, and just accepting anything he says tells you, okay. and accepting everything with a Jess, uh, you can be saved. So this concept of confession. Uh, mm -hmm. it, I mean, again, that seems to be fairly standard. Uh, but 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 you've asked me just to pause here. Uh, why is yeah. that? Uh, because you can see the Hollywood sign uh, saying yes uh -huh. uh, on the top of the mountain, <laughs> and it's one one thing is that they have used the cult has used big landmarks in all the sectors. Uh -huh. uh, you have a big like thing to Jesus statue in uh, in Rio de Janeiro, sized. Uh, statue of their leader uh, in another part uh, and they have this yes sign and yes is a really core thing in this confession uh, tactic that they're using uh, right. it seems to be based on a theater uh, well, drill or like technique that I've used when I've done the theater mm -hmm. and it's that you're not allowed to say no to a new concept or to an action being proposed. Uh, and is this sort of always, always encouraging you to, to come out of a comfort zone, I guess? Yeah. By constantly saying uh, yes and agreeing to things, okay. Exactly. And they're using confession uh, and this yes technique hmm. in the cult hmm. to make people tell them their darkest secrets mm -hmm. uh, and then using them against them, but also using these techniques to make people cross boundaries they might have not crossed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if they were allowed to say no okay uh, which is forming a really intricate way of basically brainwashing people to do what they want well it, and in that sense it's interesting because it, it's 
this is something else that, that seems to co often come up when people when, you know, when studies are done in terms of um, uh, cults and sickle brainwashing and this, this sort of thing is it, it often revolves around a, cer a certain amount of uh, consent in that sense. Yeah. Um, so would you say then that, that, that this community, even though they are essentially being drugged, they're also kind of, therefore they are, they sort of enter into a, con a, a consenting relationship with their oppressors? Uh, oh, very much so. And I would also like to point out that a lot of these people have joined the cult. Uh, like, the, it's, it's not a, a one-week thing that this cult has suddenly appeared in this area. No. Uh, this is something that's been growing and you can find clues uh, within the game of people like calling others and talking about how they're worried about this cult growing and that they're growing more and more extreme as time goes by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is also something that you can see if you watch uh, like documentaries and uh, research that's been done on modern day cults mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that they seldom start out as like the weird apocalyptic shit that we see here mm -hmm. uh, uh, but they are slowly integrating themselves within the area that they're in Well it's interesting because this sort of reminds me a little bit of um, a while ago I think Jeanette did a video uh, on Arkeusu talking about uh, the this, the culture of um, ghost hunters mm -hmm. and the supernatural and how in some respects it becomes like a self-reinforcing uh, sort of system that eventually has to end with a question being answered and the question in the case of that is whether or not someone believes in ghosts in this mm -hmm. instance and often I think again as you say research often points in terms of cults to the idea that eventually the the prophet the leader or whatever has to be proven right mm -hmm. uh, and and uh sometimes that will mean maybe the cult will lead to maybe some sort of mass uh mass suicide or something um but in other cases the the cult leader manages to sort of essentially postpone what is typically the the prophesied end of times or whatever Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of, of uh, high-profile stories that have come about in the past few years, I think, of um, cult leaders predicting the end of the world and then it not happening. And but it's, it's, it's interesting how the people who are in in that uh, in that bubble often rely upon this structure for their well for their uh, for their self worth and also for for their aspirations. I mean, is that something that you see in this as, in this game as well? Do you actually see people? Uh, being so invested in this Absolutely. society that they they can't really leave it, otherwise they'll lose it. Absolutely, everything. and you also have this ingrained sense of of us and them. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you, especially in the game, since you basically manage to prove him right, uh, which have spurred the cultists to actually feeling that they they know what's going on and their view of the world was correct. Okay, um, so, so in that sense, in some respects, you, uh, so in the case of these real world cult leaders who, who prophesy something that doesn't happen, what you've done actually is you've, you've made it happen. You, you sort of proved exactly. that this guy was quote unquote right. And, oh, I see. Yeah, but he also did a really smart thing since he prophesied that society was going to move against them and try to take him away mm, mm. Uh, and that's a really easy prophecy to like make right when you're doing illegal stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay now just then uh, we just said uh, we just stopped on something called cult orders what's going on there yeah you they have orders laying around that you can read uh-huh uh, uh -huh. and this is what what he is telling his cultists to do and is Bliss the drug that you're talking about? Or, yeah. I see. So that so they put Bliss into the water and that propagates. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, okay. Now, it says that, you know how sensitive Bliss can be to heat? Uh, does that imply that it's explosive? It is. It's very explosive. Shall, shall we look at some explosive explosions? Yeah, I, I don't think I blew anything up right here. Uh -huh. But I have blown a lot of stuff up. 
Okay. Uh, so we can absolutely jump to some explosions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are we about to see some explosions? Yes, uh, not not in the the first explosions aren't going to be intentional from okay. my part. Okay. Uh, so you're also going to see how I react in a panic when okay. I game. Um, now it's, I should just say, uh, obviously, we we try to walk a line with these videos between serious anthropological archaeological analysis, as it were, and just having some fun. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't help but wonder whether or not there is actually an anthropology of explosions. I wonder if that's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So what happens when we set off an explosion in this room of people? <laughs> how, how, what, what makes this reaction come from an explosion? Exactly, yeah. 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 <laughs> What's the social implication of this, uh, of this party popper? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, but obviously, this, by the sounds of it, this is going to be more than a party popper, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, you, so you're sneaking a popper on the house. What, what are you expecting to find in this particular uh, building? Well, I've seen this little green diamond thingy, which mm -hmm. indicates a quest and a person. So this is, uh, that's, I'll just sort of point out it, uh, with my cursor, yeah. this thing on the map, on the, the heads-up display here, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why I'm sneaking towards it, because I'm like, ooh, maybe I can find something here. Okay. Hmm, allies, good, good. And also, I'm always looking for caches of supplies, uh, med kits, uh, so when, Ammo. You, so when you say allies, are these people that you can potentially rescue people who, yes. are, who are being held hostage? Uh, or? A rather big part of the game is actually rescuing civilians and named NPCs. Okay. Uh, and making sure they don't fall into the cult's hands. Okay, okay. And would um, this be based on, is someone sort of asking you to do this or...? Well, you have this uh, this prepper guy that saves you in the beginning of the game. Okay. Uh, he has his own island uh, that the cult hasn't been able to dig their claws into, okay. and that's your base of operations. So, sp uh, speaking of preppers, just, to, just as, a, as, a, as, a, as a thought, um, did you want to do maybe a video on preppers next? Time? Oh. Yes. Oh, explosion! What's going on? Yeah. Okay. Now it's just oh. start. Yeah, th there you go. Yeah, I'm burning. Okay, okay. What what, ha what went wrong? What happened? What did you do? I don't know. I, I still haven't <laughs> figured out why things blew, blew, blew up there. <laughs> wow, but okay. I, as you can see, the 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 quest signal is gone. Oh, okay. So the, the man... I didn't rescue that person. No, you didn't rescue that person. <laughs> <laughs> you did not? No, that was not a successful rescue. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't. No. Uh, but yeah, and this is also a really interesting mechanic of the game. Uh, fire spreads. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so you always have to be careful so you don't like get, get caught up in it. Yeah. So, so um, can you can you, for example, set a fire and use it as a distraction, perhaps? Or yeah, you can absolutely like if you see people in fields and stuff. Uh, you can put the basically put the piece, uh, field on fire with a Molotov cocktail. Right. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so, uh, in, in, I mean, obviously, I'd like to return to this idea of preppers and, and, and mm -hmm. examine, I guess, how because preppers in the real world are an interesting sort of subculture. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how they're represented here. But, but is that is this is this sort of part of this sort of um, political. Uh, and ge geopolitical landscape that 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 uh, that's kind of being satirized here is this idea that people are uh, somehow removed from mainstream civilization and therefore they 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 sometimes they're, well in this instance they're not not wrong to be paranoid by the look of it but um, but but somehow they become paranoid is it I mean but how 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 very much so and also. Uh, the game is set, so the isolation of the valley that you're in is mm -hmm. part of the issue and why the cult has chosen to be there. Okay. Because they can be isolated. And basically everyone that's putting up a resistance at the, at the moment of the game mm -hmm. is other like preppers or isolationists that doesn't like the, like, like the cult mm -hmm. or there are some small towns or villages in the valley uh, where there also are people that are trying to put up the resistance. Okay. But the easiest way to avoid a cult so far has been to 
not be within mainstream society. I see. So, so um, okay. Well, that, in that sense, then, it, uh, is the cult sort of deliberately focusing on things like you know shops and and roads and infrastructure that's been put in place by society at large? Is, is that they very sort of... much are, right. and uh, I've found it easier uh, to basically just walk cross country because they also use all these infrastructures. So if you move along a road in the game, you're much more likely to run into enemies uh, than if you move cross country. If you move cross country, you have the issue of bears, bears and wild animals, though. So. Uh. Okay. Now it looks it looks like you might have um, spotted a, a silo to explode. Yes. Uh, and some enemies to take down. <laughs> now, it, wait. So in that sense, then um, uh, again, this is something which. which intrigues me about the, the potential of this sort of game is I mean what does it have anything to say about the way the the irony that uh, that these smaller groups want to be as it were separate from so-called mainstream society but they also rely on if nothing else the economic input that absolutely the federal uh, government has, has put into the area I, I absolutely think so hmm. and it's also showcasing like how vulnerable uh, modern day society can be mm, uh, mm. to these kind of things because when you is in this kind of in between modern society and isolation as this valley is um, you you get you get all the perks uh, yeah, of yeah. like roads and cars and Electricity. economics yeah. mm -hmm. electro uh, but you're also so far away from help when anything happens. Mm, mm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and what what uh, did in that sense then? Do you think there's, there's, that there are any? Um, I was thinking again in terms of a. If 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 I was I'm imagining that I'm kind of uh, writing an ethnography following your character around the landscape almost. Um, mm -hmm. What sort of lessons then do you think the this sort of game or the scenario, if any, tries to lay out for for people in terms of managing that relationship between small small subsets of communities and large infrastructure? Because because uh, I mean in that sense I mean uh, I understand uh, the 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 desire not you know, not to let say the desire to not necessarily have everything forced upon you as a society mm -hmm. from a societal level. Um, but at the same time, I suppose, is there anything in terms of, I suppose what I'm saying is, is there anything that, that, that society at large is doing wrong in order to actually alienate people in that sense in this game? Is there something which you know, your character might take back to the federal government and say, well, you know, we should implicate uh, you know, a better relationships with these well, people? Well, uh, above everything else, uh, they have made, they haven't seen, well, when we're talking about the cult, mm -hmm. uh, the prospect and the danger and the goal of the cult early enough. Okay. Uh, when you when they decide to go in and actually do something, uh, we already have, like like I said, this huge monument in the middle of the valley. Uh, you so in have, that sense, their pre their, a federal presence can only be, can only be seen as, as, as suspicious and uh, negative. Yeah, and right. antagonistic. Yeah. Uh, because they have, and there is reports in the game of people saying that they've called in this and they have tried to report the cult for various suspicious activity, hmm. uh, like for years, hmm. and nothing has happened, and they've continued to grow. Hmm. Uh, Which is interesting because again, this is both edging towards sort of so yeah sociology almost, but there is an interesting. A phenomenon there, which we did see during the most recent election in the U.S., whereby in the you know in the so-called Rust Belt, you know, in places where uh, they couldn't get the sort of federal attention that they wanted, and yet they were mm -hmm. getting, as they saw it, uh, you know, an overbearing uh, legal system put upon them, this kind of uh, mm -hmm. that they felt aggrieved by. Uh, is in that sense, does this game sort of comment on on how uh, the there is a nuance to the to the lightness of touch, but also the heavy-handedness of of this sort of 
large versus small society relationship. Absolutely, and the lack of fine touch and nuance that can be can be federal involvement mm. uh, because when you in this first opening sequences of the game, the federal marshal is very sure of himself and very sure of the system that he's representing, and he's just expecting people to follow along, mm -hmm. uh, which is part of the problem in mm -hmm. why we get gunned down and I'm now trying to survive on my own. Uh, so we'll, we'll, because... we'll, we'll just we'll just move it forward in a little bit in time, terms of time. Mm -hmm. We'll just move, move us forward to uh, maybe around about the out one hour mark. Um, mm -hmm. But so, so here, here you are trying to, again, trying to survive. Um, but, but also, you seem to have uh, picked up a, a, a friend along the way. Yes, yes, that's Boomer. Uh, he's a good dog. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. I found him at the pumping, pumpkin farm. <laughs> <laughs> the pumpkin farm. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Well, actually, that's something else that, 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 that occurs to me I, that I was curious about. And so it's just, what's been the relationship between this cult in this valley and ongoing life. So if I mean pumpkins are still being farmed, infrastructure still seems to be sort of being surf serviced, even if the ultimate origin of that infrastructure was a broader set society. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, uh, what yeah, what what has been the effect of, of this cult in terms well, of Well the cult has life? used a lot of like financial means to either buy people out or force them out uh -huh. uh, to take over uh, societal functions. Right, okay. Uh, so you can find like towns or farms that has been owned by people that resisted and now those people are dead and there's cultists using the property instead. Right, I see. Uh, I see. Or, or they convert you and you uh, then you get to live, basically. Okay, okay. Uh, I see. And so, uh, in that sense then, what, what, do you, what would you I mean, again, I suppose both of us, once again, acknowledge we're, you know, we're European, we're non-American in that sense. Mm -hmm. But what, uh, what would you say has been the uh, in in the game has been? I, I suppose are there any people who kind of think that this is the lesser of two evils? In so much as I can well imagine that there would be people in the real world who would mm. rather that this happened than say, you know, the infamous line is you know that the government takes my guns or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Other people who sort of don't buy into the cult, but at the same time would rather have a, a sort of a local militia rather than a, a you know, a, a larger governmental influence. Uh, well, you have, you have both people that are like not wanting the cult and not wanting the government. Right. Uh, and you also have people like uh, you have plenty of like Vietnam veterans and stuff like that. Hmm. Uh, in the landscape that are like basically going yeah uh, this isn't going to work I'm just going to do what I do best and free my land uh, it, there's a lot of focus on so sort of freedom. personal survival and freedom yeah yeah okay that's interesting and so well, what what then and uh, this this again this is a very big uh, very big concept especially uh, politically and and anthropologically what would you say then does this game have to say about freedom personal freedom political freedom religious freedom um, is there anything that, that, that you think is, is, is like a, a take-home message from from their well, I'm, approach? I, I'm, I'm thinking that the game is trying to like put out the point that like do what you want but don't force it on others mm. or don't hurt others mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because then this might happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, I've been thinking that it's really interesting that they use the Christian cult mm. Mm. Uh, rather than some other cult. Okay, uh, so, so, so uh, well, why, why do you think that's interesting? I don't, I don't want to put, put words into your mouth there. Why, why is that interesting? Uh, well, basically, it makes it easier to talk about uh, because it's not as uh, loaded a question. Uh, so, you see, in so much as do you think if this was, uh, I don't know, a Charles Manson sort of situation, it could immediately be dismissed as this sort of thing could and would never happen. Exactly. Whereas, because it's actually it's actually a subset of a global religion, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, admittedly, without any oversight, you know, there's no, there's not like a local, yeah, a yeah. local bishop or anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, like, uh, it's uh, not like the Pope has agreed to this. No, uh. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think, especially if I think Francis, he seems to be a fairly nice guy. Um, I don't yeah. think he would agree to it. Um, but okay, so, so and therefore, you think that that's a clever move? Then is that is you, yeah, but, and it's also something that um, a lot of like their audience is relating to i would think well, uh, and just well in that sense do you, th- do you think the game wants to be antagonistic or do you think it wants actually to help to simply say this could be you i mean i suppose actually funnily enough as i guess uh christians might say yeah there but for the grace of god as it were you know um mm-hmm. pe- pe- the, the, there are ways in which society could go down this path this sort of thing uh, I, I, I'm definitely thinking that they want to point out that this could happen. Yeah. Whether or not it's in an antagonistic manner or not depends on on the recipient, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you want to be antagonised, you will be. Yeah. I see. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. And so, so uh, I, I suppose as you're wandering around this landscape, then as an as an agent, as an actor, I guess in this mm-hmm. in this world. Um, how do you feel then? And so, I mean, as a player, as you're as you're moving around this landscape, do you feel as though you're you're sort of? Oh, hang on. Who's he? It's Vendel, the Viet uh, Vietnamese vet I told you about. Ah, oh, okay, cool. He's got a good taste in music. Mhm. So I'll just turn him up a little bit. seen in that jungle we made a pact that if something like that were ever to happen in our country we'd be ready put together quite a collection guns ammo gear called it our freedom fund on account it was going to make sure we stayed that way until the grave any police department that was a long time ago involuntary now the only one left still breathing is me the gears locked up safe and sound but we split the code amongst ourselves, etched each number on the back of our lighters. I'd take care of this myself if I were ten years younger, but now, right. hell, I'd just get myself killed for no good reason. I need so, that, so that's interesting in so much yeah. as what you seem to have is, uh, I suppose as you were saying there, there are people who, who, uh, who are... Actually, this is exactly. I didn't even know this was going to come up. Actually, but this is exactly what I was getting at. So there are people who are suspicious of broader government intentions, mm-hmm. but they don't necessarily want to go down the pathway of the, of this cult sort of in, incursion into their into their their valley. That's that's really cool, actually. Um, but 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 just coming back to what I was saying before, if, how do you find yourself feeling as an actor in this landscape? Do you feel as though you, you are meant to? Um, are you given the impression that you are supposed to, to feel that you have a moral authority coming in and doing what you're doing? Or, or, is, or is there sort of an ambiguity that plays out in the game? I think it's definitely an ambiguity. And also, there's a you get a real sense of desperation, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. especially in the beginning, uh, where you're just basically trying to survive rather than do anything against the cult. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're actively, actively hunting you. Okay. Uh, so you 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 got to fight or just die. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. And then as the story progresses, you realize the depths of what they're doing, and mm-hmm. that people are people look up to you because you get things done. Uh, mm-hmm. So even if you don't take want or feel like you should have a leading role in the whole thing. Uh, you just kind of gather the resources and give them to people who can make sure that you get the help you need. Um, okay. I mean, basically, the first quest is you realizing that your partner as a deputy in the police department is, has been captured uh, and trying to get to them to save them. Okay, okay. And so, and so, so in that sense, then, because you were talking about how people in this world all seem to be sort of acting in their own interests for the most part. Survival mm. is, is one of the key themes, I suppose, of all the Far Cry games, I guess. Yeah. Um, but would you say then that that, that, that 
that you sort of start off from a standpoint of personal survival, but then it moves into a broader, uh, I don't know, uh, an imperative is thrust upon you to be a prime, a key be actor mm -hmm. in in the in the game. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think that's okay. a really interesting way of doing it too, because I feel like they're rather succeeding mm -hmm. with making you care. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so this, is this is this your avatar then? This is yeah. the person you're playing as. Yeah. And uh, uh, what would you what did you have any any thoughts on on the customization here that you can? Uh, you can do? I think it's it's kind of nice. I'm there's some uh, microtransaction thing going on that I'm not too keen on. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can do fine without them. Uh, so. So 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 basically, if you want to, you can pay like five five dollars or whatever for for a pair of gloves, but you don't yeah. have to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. You also unlock gear as you move along in the story, so you get more to choose from, depending right. on what you find. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, okay. Well, is there, are there any any sort of final thoughts then for this video that that, that you would uh, oh. that you would like to share? I don't know. I, I I'm enjoying the game, and I'm looking forward to playing it more. Uh, I would also warn anyone uh, to browse the internet too too carefully if they don't want to get spoiled, because the spoilers are out there. Uh, okay. So so so, there is, so it's not it's not a um, it's not a, it is a story driven game in that sense then. Uh, yes, and yeah. uh, there are some twists and turns that you might not want to have spoiled for you if you're going to I play. I see. I see. So were you in the cult all along, maybe? <laughs> I, I'm not going to comment. <laughs> okay, cool. He was a ghost all along. Um, okay, well, thank you for that, Lou. Thank you. And um, uh, hopefully this has been an interesting video for you guys at home in so much mm -hmm. as this is not your traditional archaeological or anthropological fair. What we're looking at here, uh, I don't think is actually too much of a stretch in so much as this is the sort of stuff that anthropology um, and archaeology addresses in the modern world using mm -hmm. theories and ideas that we develop elsewhere. But, uh, but hopefully uh, you guys have enjoyed this and hope if you have any thoughts or questions, please do comment below. But I think the one thing that we both say, I think both Liv and I would say is we're not actually seeing this as an actual uh, actual commentary on a modern political situation in the US. I don't think this is actually happening in America. No, no, I don't. Um, yeah. No, so 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 please don't don't get into that below. I'm not I really don't care if you support Trump or not. Uh, it, that doesn't matter. What we're commenting on here is this is this is essentially this is a, a, a an interactive thought experiment, I think. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's sort of the way that, that we've been approaching it. And um, do, you think, do you think, I mean, I suppose just finally, do you think it, that, that it works in that sense as a, as a, as a cause, cause as I say, I mean, right at the beginning of what this whole process in the first video we did, we thought that there might be some potential here. And mm -hmm. do you think that, 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 that the makers of Far Cry have been aware of, of it as a, a, a sort of Petri dish for, for that sort of, that sort of thought experiment kind of thing. Uh, I think so. I mean, I, I wouldn't give, I, I don't know if that's their intention or if it's just something that they thought was a good concept and went with it. But either way, yeah. they've made a good thing about it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So it works. Okay. So it, it, wor it works for our purposes, whether they meant it to or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, well, again, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, and uh, yeah, next time I'd like to look a little bit, uh, look a little bit more closely at preppers. Maybe the computer game, a little bit of real world preppers as well. Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of cool. Okay. Um, anyway, as ever, guys. Until next time, do take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.